Now that the honeymoon phase for Spider-Man 2 has pretty much wrapped up, I thought I'd try to collate all my thoughts into one video and assess whether the critically acclaimed sequel to the Marvel that was Spider-Man 2018 is actually better than what came before it, and whether it truly deserves the title as the best superhero game ever developed, surpassing some greats in such a stride, and the absolute masterpieces that in many ways was the games that preceded it years prior. This video, as shown at the start of the video, will not hold back from any any spoilers for the game's story or gameplay sections. And so once again, if you have not finished the game yet, I do not recommend watching this video and instead leaving it for once you complete the game in its entirety. I think first I want to discuss what's my current favourite superhero game, or rather the game that was my favourite even before playing Spider-Man 2, and compare how Spider-Man 2, in all of its supposed glory, ranks next to this particular game. This might be considered a hot take to some, but my favourite superhero game of all time is Batman Arkham Knight. Usually when someone states their favourite game from the critically acclaimed and universally loved Batman Arkham series, it isn't uncommon to see the incredible Arkham City topping everyone's charts. And for a while there, I was the same, seeing Arkham City as the very pinnacle of the superhero fantasy, the ideal creation that is supposed to revel in the manner in which it provides us, the players, with the power fantasy of an already developed superhero who we deeply understand and relate with. But in many ways, Arkham Knight far supersedes what came before it, taking every Everything that Rocksteady had built with the foundation forged by both Asylum and City, and forging a masterpiece like no other, a game that unironically does make you feel innately like Batman. And to me, other than how fun these superhero games always are, it's because of the power fantasy that they provide that this level of fun is derived from such games. They're unique to other games in how they take an already existing and beloved character and mold them into a version that takes all of the tropes from the other media the character has been in while making it an interactive experience experience that us, the players, can truly engage with and understand the greatness and joy in being a superhero. Batman Arkham Knight, much more than Arkham City or even Marvel's Spider-Man 2018, in my opinion, provides us with an almost perfect outlet to revel in the power fantasies it creates, the feeling of being Batman, the joy and adrenaline that one gets from grappling atop a clock tower or gliding across the darkened sky of Gotham, preying upon the criminals that light your path. It's truly a game unlike any other, which might explain the hundreds of hours I've put into to the game over the years, which is something I've only done in a handful of titles, and definitely no single player and story centric title is in that list. Arkham Knight may have various flaws, the handling of the Batmobile's integration might be one of the most infamous ones, or the identity of the Arkham Knight himself being easily guessed in the game's marketing material, but what the game never fails to do is to allow you to embody the cowl of Batman and truly become him in a fashion that we've never seen before, to be reborn as the predator in the sky who hunts all those that damage the integrity of society at its core. It definitely helps that Batman in recent years, also like Spider-Man, has increasingly seen more pop media that encapsulates his character, making more and more of us attracted to his character and what drives him to stop the crime in a city too far gone. The combat of this game, the way it handles its stealth mechanics, all play fantastically into the power fantasy that Batman himself was always supposed to deliver for decades, and I think Arkham Knight is one of the greatest examples of a game's ability to serve players an almost flawless power fantasy that not only is true to the already established genes of such a popular and beloved character, but to add on to it and make it one of the most immersive video game experiences I've ever had the joy of having. Now on to the very purpose of this video. Is the newly released and supposedly masterful Spider-Man 2 truly the best superhero game of them all? Did it really learn from the mistakes of its predecessors and pass this on in a light that redefined the series that Insomniac has handcrafted? And most importantly, has it finally overtaken the glory of the Arkham series, and particularly Arkham Knight, which does not ever fail to allow its players to enter the power fantasy of an established pop culture character who we are all so familiar with? Before answering such a complex question, let's delve into what this game succeeds in and what it fails in, in both a gameplay and story manner. Firstly, the gameplay, or more specifically what builds up these games in the combat and the swinging, is definitely a step up in most departments from the two games that came before it. The swinging here is unlike anything I've ever experienced if you, for some reason, didn't feel like the prior games gave enough of that Spider-Man fantasy in New York, then this game delivers on that in absolute abundance, to the point where I honestly cannot see anyone disliking the game's traversal mechanics in any way. The swinging is smooth and flawless, swinging from rooftop to rooftop or in and between districts within New York City has never felt smoother with the continued addition of Miles Morales' tricks in the prior game, we finally have a system of traversal that is almost perfected in these games, doing tricks in the air while having a web swinging system that is super 
super customizable to any player's liking, makes the swinging in this game absolutely superb in every aspect. But the best addition to the traversal mechanics within this game specifically is the addition of the web wings, which allow you to travel at extremely high speeds and fly around New York City in a fashion that I don't think many of us expected in a Spider-Man game. But its integration is absolutely amazing, and mixing and matching this system with that of the web swinging and different tricks you can do in this game make it absolutely joyful to swing and traverse around the crevices of New York City, to take in all of its air and to enjoy the bliss it delivers or the darkness that it embroils upon the player in certain moments of the game. As well as the amazing traversal, I think in many ways the combat of this game is definitely a step up from the previous games. I think this is largely helped by having two different Spider-Men with different abilities that also evolve as you play through the game, but the combat in this game was just so damn satisfying and fun. I had a lot of fun creating combos and unique ways to tackle my enemies or continuously switching between Miles and Peter to go from Miles' chain lightning ability to that of Peter's symbiote attacks, which I have to say really do deliver on the power fantasy these games are supposed to deliver. I think Peter's symbiote catalogue of attacks in itself makes up a large portion of why this game's combat is so fluid and fun, as having these new abilities and attacks with increased damage bonuses and a new ultimate ability has made the combat of this game the best in the series by a large margin. Playing as both Spider-Man was delightful through every boss fight in the game and every encounter of the game with the game's various enemies, from the hunters to the symbiote monsters we encounter at the end of the game. Miles and Peter are distinct enough from one another that I had an absolute blast switching between them in a manner that is almost instantaneous in order to just test out their different arsenal of abilities. And quickly without going into too much detail because other countless videos out there already do that in much detail and I definitely want to do it in a separate video, I want to talk about the positives of this game's story. The game has a very convoluted and messy story at times, but that doesn't mean it doesn't provide us with some of the best moments of the series thus far and moments that in many ways encapsulate Spider-Man as a character in its entirety. I really enjoyed this game's story from the very beginning to the end, and the various plot twists in addition to the integration of Kraven the Hunter and Venom as villains were mostly amazing, and I had an absolute blast being hooked to the game's story and just becoming entirely enthralled with what it delivers us. The interactions between Peter and Miles and even Peter and MJ made this game in many ways a game that was much more intimate than its predecessors, and the building of Harry's character only for him to become absorbed by his desire to live is one of absolute amazement and wonder. I was shocked at various moments of the story, enthralled by the choices took by Insomniac, and I can say wholeheartedly that Insomniac did deliver quite a solid story within this game, especially with the cards they decided to play with a focus on two Spider-Men, in addition to villains not usually seen in conjunction with one another in Venom and Kraven. However, is it better than the first game's absolutely amazing story? Definitely not. I did enjoy the second game's story a lot, but its third act especially seems to be a jumble of things that Insomniac didn't know how to conclusively fit into the puzzle of the rest of the game that often made such moments within the third act jarring and weirdly out of place. Venom felt like he wasn't fleshed out enough as a villain, and the whole taking over the world plot was entirely predictable, and I didn't really feel Venom's hatred for Spider-Man in any way, which is really what I expected from a Venom here. It does work in some departments, but in others it just feels strange, and I think Kraven himself was a bit of a wasted opportunity, although definitely having his moments. I don't think this story quite showed how desperate he was to find this final hunt of his before his death, and I think a couple of gameplay moments or scenarios while exploring the open world where Kraven is actively hunting you instead of the hunters that are spread out across New York would have been a cool addition that would have properly added to the feeling that you're being hunted at all times, especially as symbiote Peter. I think Insomniac is quite aware of all the criticism being relayed at the game's story, and I really hope they go back to the drawing board for the next game and are able to deliver a story that is cohesive in all of its parts and ensures that we are truly invested into both the villains and the protagonists. In addition to this, something that I did not like about the gameplay of this game is the lack of spider gadgets, or at least gadgets that felt a part of Spider-Man's arsenal. The first game had more gadgets for us to work with, and I don't understand why Insomniac even dialed back on such gadgets, and I think the next game definitely needs to add some better gadgets in order to bring the combat to its perfection. So is Spider-Man 2 the best superhero game out there? No, I don't think so at least. I think both Batman Arkham Knight and the first Spider-Man game in 2018 still beat this game in many ways, and that the power fantasy has not fully been derived in all of its facets, especially with a story that can be flawed and some components such as stealth and gadgets being so dialed back that it makes them feel missing as a core part of the gameplay. But like many others, I definitely believe that the next Spider-Man game will be, by a long stretch, the best superhero video game ever made.